says that Washington's decision to arm the terrorists in Syria reveals the American role in inflaming the crisis. Leader of Democratic North Korea emphasizes that Syria will emerge victorious from the crisis thanks to the unity of people and army. Our army units continue to target terrorists in different areas inflicting heavy losses upon them. Gentlemen, I am Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. Syria has affirmed that news media reports about American officials' statements regarding Washington's decision to arm the terrorist groups in Syria confirm the American role in igniting the crisis. An official source at the Foreign and Expatriates Ministry said, Washington's decision also confirms the American administration's dishonesty in finding a political solution to the crisis through holding an international conference in Geneva. The source added that it has been clear to all the reality of the American intentions which aim at continuing the violence and terrorism in Syria in order to shake up security and stability in the region in service of Israel's hostile objectives. The source pointed out that since the beginning of the crisis in Syria, the USA has not stopped arming the terrorists and offering all forms of support to their crimes which target the Syrian people and ruin the country's infrastructure. However, the Syrian people's steadfastness, the source added, and the courage of their armed forces are apt to foil the American-Israeli schemes and eliminate their criminal tools in Syria. Leader of the People's Republic of Korea, Kim Jong-un, has affirmed his country's absolute confidence that Syria will emerge triumphant out of the crisis, thanks to the cohesion between the people and the Syrian army under the leadership of President Bashar al-Assad. Perceiving the Ba'ath Arab Socialist Party delegation headed by the party's Assistant Secretary General Abdullah al-Ahmar in the capital Pyongyang during the celebrations held on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the victory of the Korean people over the American aggression, the Korean president said the USA and world imperialism stand behind most of the crisis and wars of world countries and work to fragment sovereign states with a view of finding justifications for military intervention. The Korean leader warned that the aggression on Syria would drag the region to a conflict that threatens international peace and security. Mr. Al-Ahmar, on his part, affirmed that the Syrian leadership has sought since the beginning of the crisis to solve it through national dialogue. Information Minister Amran Zabi has affirmed that Syria, which is facing all forms of terrorism at the military and economic levels, still regards dialogue as an available and necessary possibility to unify the Syrians' efforts in confronting terrorism and defending the homeland and its sovereignty. During his meeting with the international envoy to Syria, Mukhtar Lamani, today, Mr. Zabi said, the countries that support Jabhat al-Nusra have gone beyond all limits in their behavior, ignoring all relevant international resolutions in combating terrorism and violating what has been internationally agreed upon in terms of unifying efforts in this respect. Minister Zabi reviewed with Lamani the internal developments and the efforts exerted to stop the assault on Syria, as well as Syria's firm stand in confronting terrorism on the one hand, and earnestly working to reach a political solution with the participation of all Syrians on the other. Terrorists detonated an explosive device stuck to a car owned by Dr. Ragad al Farra, who was severely injured during the explosion in Mashru'a Dummar in Damascus. Dr. Farra was severely injured and was immediately taken to Al Muasat Hospital. Meanwhile, initial information indicated that an explosive device was blown up near Al Mazza Airport in Damascus, wounding two citizens. In Homs countryside, army units restored security and stability to a Sukhna town in Palmyra countryside and eliminated a big number of terrorists affiliated with a Nusra Front terrorist organization.
A Sukhna town was cleaned of terrorists by the Syrian Arab army after targeting a terrorist group which was seeking to execute a suicide operation at the entrance of the town. Army units destroyed large quantities of weapons and ammunition and dismantled explosive devices planted in the streets of the town. The army laid control on the telephone center, municipality building, and at Souq Square, in addition to the main entrances leading to Deir Zor Highway and at in the south. In Iran, the Iranian Assistant Foreign Minister for Arab and African Affairs, Mr. Hussein Amir Abdullahian, has said that Europe's decision to place the so-called Hezbollah military wing on the list of terrorist organizations has proved Europe's wrong understanding of the region. He added that the decision will have no impact on the party's strategic role and resistance. Abdullahian ascribed the EU decision to Hezbollah's important role in the region within the axis of resistance. He stressed that Hezbollah is passing through its strongest political and military phases and that the party's Secretary General Hassan Nasrullah is leading today the resistance against the Zionist entity wisely and courageously, whereas the Zionist entity is living its worst circumstances. He pointed out that Iran strongly supports Hezbollah and is proud of the resistance strategy. Sharp differences are revealed between Egypt's political parties and army on the one hand and the Muslim Brotherhood on the other following the speech of Defense Minister Abdel Fattah al-Sisi who called on the Egyptian people to take to the streets in solidarity with the army against terrorism. As heads and leaders of political parties in Egypt responded positively to Assisi's call to confront terrorism supported by the Muslim Brotherhood, Egyptian presidency under the leadership of Adli Mansour expressed support for the National Army in its effort to combat terrorism. For their part, the leaders of Muslim Brotherhood described the step taken by the army as the first spark of igniting civil war, calling on its supporters to take to the streets and confront their opponents, a step considered by Egyptian national forces as a violation of Egypt's civil peace. Meanwhile, three Egyptian soldiers were killed and three others injured following new attacks on military positions in the city of Al Arish in Sinai. Now over to latest business and market news, but after a short break, stay tuned. <laughs> 